So the next thing we're going to do is multiply. And we're going to multiply a number uh, by its conjugate. So compute zz bar when z a plus i b. All right, so first thing we're going to do is compute uh, z bar. So z bar, put a bar on top, it negates the imaginary part. Uh, let's see, all right, negative b i. Uh, you still get uh, commutativity, which means you can change the order of multiplication in complex numbers. So we have a basically a negative b here. So I'm going to compute z, z bar. Now we're just foiling here, but of course we're going to go a different order. We're going to floy first a times a. Last, we have a negative i squared b squared. You multiply enough of these, you'll realize you're going to basically negate that right there. Uh, it turns into negative one. All right, outside is a minus i b. So I'm going to keep alphabetical order a b i. Inside is i b a or a i b. The two terms cancel a b i a b i. Those are gone. And negative i squared is positive one. All right, so we get a squared plus b squared. Now this has a special meaning. This is the magnitude or modulus uh, or absolute value. Now you may think that's a little weird. Why is it the absolute value? Well, it's basically the distance away from zero. And if you just think about where our points were, uh, we're way back to the beginning, our distance from zero, uh, right here, that is, uh, well, it's r squared. When we computed it down there, but that's, that's your distance, is your radius right there. So to make this correct, it's not quite z, z bar, uh, ooh. z magnitude is z magnitude squared. Okay, we're going to multiply in polar form now. Uh, we're going to do... Alright, we'll do the bad form, the long form with cosine and sine first, and then we'll do the reasonable way. Uh, so, this is going to be... Uh, Put a box around this. It's a nice shortcut formula to know. Uh, and it's also magnitude or modulus. <coughs> All right. So we're going to multiply. Z1 times Z2. And we're just going to use subscripts 1 and 2 just to note the different pieces on these two different numbers. So there's our first number. It just has a radius sub 1 and a theta sub 1. Oops. That should be a sub 1. All right, that's Z1 right there. Z2 is going to be the exact same thing, just using subscript 2. All right, and we multiply these. Uh, we are going to FOIL or FLOY. First thing, we have a commutative property, so I can move R2 on the other side of this product right here. So we're going to get R1, R2 cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 cos theta 2 
plus i sine theta 2. All right, we're going to FOI right now. So we're going to get cos theta 1, cos theta 2. Last i squared is negative 1, so it's negative sine theta 1, sine theta 2. All right, so we're going to the outside inside. So we have, let's see, I'm going to go inside outside. Hopefully it'll look more like where I want to be going. This is going to be i times, so we're going to have sine theta 1, cos theta 2, plus the outside is cos theta 1, sine theta 2. And again, these all had i multiplied by them, so I just took the i out right here. They each have an i. Okay, now, if you know what identity we're going to use, that is impressive. I usually have to look at the cheat sheet. So here we go, our first identity right here is cos cos minus sine sine. So that is cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. Yes. All right. Plus i. Now there's an, another identity right here. This one goes sine cos, sine cos plus cos sine. And that is sine of the sum of those two angles. All right, so that was a lot of work to figure out that we multiply radii and add angles. Of course, radii is a modulus. So that's kind of weird. It's a product of complex numbers where parts of them get multiplied, one part gets multiplied, another part gets added. And it has a sort of a weird structure. What ends up happening, if you think about uh, the just the angle right here, you're adding two angles together, so it's basically putting a spin on it of whatever angle two is. So you basically go angle one and then angle two. And that's what the that sum of those two angles means. So complex numbers multiply by kind of twisting each other around. And then depending on what the radii are, you know, if they're both big numbers, it makes the radius even bigger. If you get a big times a small number, you kind of get a medium number. Two small numbers multiply to make a really small number. So it kind of just depends on what the radii, what values they have. But they just have a multiplicative relationship. Let's do this exact same thing in Euler's form. So still the same numbers. We're multiplying here. First thing, first thing notice, it's a lot less writing. I still get commutative property. Remember we're multiplying here and here. I don't want you to think about vectors and a dot product, so I'm gonna delete that, but that we're just multiplying right here. So I can reorder the R1, R2, and then we have E, I, theta 1, E, I, theta 2, and you need to know your exponent rules here when you multiply bases. You're adding powers. Now last thing, we're going to do the easiest factoring. There's an I in the exponent here. So as you can see, when we multiply here, it's a lot less work, but you get the exact same result in the end. You're going to take the two radii and multiply, and take the two angles and add them. So that's how you 
multiply in Euler's form. Now we're going to see uh, division in Euler's form. So we have r one e to the i theta one over r two e to the i theta two. So I'm going to do this in an algebraic way, and then we're going to come back and oh, forgot the imaginary. Come back and do this a slightly different way uh, to talk about reciprocals. I'll write that here. What's really happening is we're multiplying by a reciprocal. But let's just go about this algebraically. So this is r1 over r2. So I'm going to split that fraction off right there. And then we have ei theta 1 over ei theta 2. And when we divide bases, we subtract their powers. e to the i. So we got theta 1 minus theta 2. They both have an i, and they'll factor out. All right, so that's all you have to uh, do division in Euler form. You're dividing radii. And subtracting angles. Now, just like division and subtraction, order is really important. So if you uh, get the order messed up, you'll get the uh, quotient messed up. So it's really important which number is on the top, which number is on the bottom. So pay attention to that. Reciprocals are definitely related. So if you have 1 over z, that could be written as 1 over r e to the i theta. The way you reciprocate it, the radius is just the reciprocal of r. How do I bring e to i theta to the top? You're going to make it negative. Now, <clears throat> this is really similar to a conjugate. Remember what happened to the conjugate? You turned your um, you turn your uh, vertical part negative. Uh, this will turn the vertical part negative, but it does other things as well. Uh, so it's not exactly like turning the vertical part negative. Uh, although it, w it will have that'll be part of the effect this will have. It obviously changes the radius or the modulus to its reciprocal. Um, and it could change uh, your horizontal to, uh, no, actually, it, it won't hurt your horizontal coordinate, but it definitely messes up your radius. All right, so that's how we do division. So let's go ahead and make some computations. So we'll do uh, one multiplication, one division. So I'm going to let z be 3. I like Euler's form. It's a lot less writing. So I'm going to stick to Euler's form. And let's get crazy and use degrees here. So that will be z, 3e to the i, uh, 20 degrees. And w will be 5e to the i, uh, 100 degrees. So part A, we're going to do Z times W. And then part B, we're going to do Z divided by W. So Z times W, let's just write these numbers next to each other. They're basically going to multiply themselves. It's our first number, 5E, I, degrees. All right, we're going to rearrange the order. So we get 3 times 5. And we get to add the angles together. So we got 20 degrees plus 100 degrees. So we have 15 e to the i, 120 degrees. So that's our answer right there. If we uh, are expected to give it in uh, rectangular form, then you would use the conversion formulas we wrote down right here. So you can absolutely use those uh, to convert. But I just wanted to show multiplication, so I'm going to leave it in that form. And now we're going to do division. So division, algebraically, 
is pretty straightforward. We have our z was 3e to the i 20 degrees, w 5e to the i 100 degrees. So we have divide the radii, it's important the 3 is on the top, 5 is on the bottom. Angles, we're going to subtract now. So we have 20 degrees minus 100 degrees. And that'll be negative 80. I like to include parentheses just to, be, if you don't include parentheses, it could look like you're subtracting. Although if I ever see this written on your paper, I'll assume this is Euler's form. But just to be a little extra careful, uh, if there's a negative sign to ensure I'm not subtracting, I'm gonna put parentheses on there to basically force multiplication. All right, so that's dividing and uh, multiplying in polar form.